And on the fourth lap, I came around a bend and a Ford Explorer was coming right at me, big uh, SUV. He was going about 40 miles an hour. He was completely into my lane. It was surreal. I had no reaction time. And then I remember the sound of me hitting his grill and then getting tossed up and into his windshield, that sound where it like smashed into the windshield. And then the screech of his brakes and then the thud I made as I came to the asphalt below. And of course, as one would imagine, that that knocked me unconscious. And then I realized, well, you know what? I was lucky. Like, oh. I I could have died, right? I, it, the accident could have been worse. I could have ended up being a, a paraplegic, a quadriplegic. Yeah. I could have had a traumatic brain injury. I could have had, like, it could have been so much worse. It's then- totally different. They've they've brought gamification to indoor cycling. So yeah. I'm on something that uses like real gears, but it connects through Bluetooth to a computer called Zwift. And so you, you'll lo- you guys will love it because I, I get to ride the, the world championship course in London. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they're like, yeah, he's an old guy. Yeah. He's like, guys, you know, like uh, he probably rides a bunch of steel bikes. And the answer to that yeah. is yes. So I, like, I even thought I was going to become a professional bowler. Right. Because <laughs> growing up in Rochester, New York, where it's all cold, you uh, play hockey and in the wintertime you go bowling. And I was like, I'm going to come up, become a professional bowler. And I own personalized bowling balls and my own personalized, <laughs> personalized bowling shirts. And like, I was totally into it. Yeah. I like, like getting up in front of my classmates for like a book report, like, you know, public speaking. Oh, I could not do it. Yeah. Like I, like I would get, I would stutter. I would get all like red in the face. I would be a, I would be a mess. <laughs> so now like, like when I think back, like I did a TEDx talk and I speak now part of my business, I'm like, wow, what a transformation. But back then, and that was all the judgment piece. Like, what are people saying about me? Right. Yeah. And, and, but I think it's very common. You know, if you're, you know, in seventh grade or 10th grade, if you're a teenager, you're worried about these things. You're just trying to survive high school. I got my first sales job when I left uh, university in Virginia, I moved to Washington, D.C., and I started selling copiers and facsimiles. If we, you know, <laughs> mm. some of your listeners might remember the day of the facsimile. Now we don't like, what's that? Yeah, right? What's exactly. a fax machine? So, and I used to sell the facsimiles with the curly paper, yeah. right? So that's, that's how old I am, not the plain, <laughs> not the nice paper now. And I hit the green button to print and it gets stuck. <laughs> But what happened is it got stuck on the hot drum that prints the paper. Uh-huh. So all of a sudden, the piece of paper starts to catch on fire. Oh my so now the God. copier is on fire inside. Now, it wasn't a huge inferno or a big blaze. But here it is. The, the paper is on fire. It's smoldering. You can smell it, right? And I'm trying to get in there to oh. pat it down. And now I'm getting all the toner cartridge ink all over oh my, my hands. God. And your so, ego is going up in smoke as well. Yeah, and, and I'm like, I'm starting to sweat. I'm like, I'm just like, it's so embarrassing. And I was like, who, who puts these ads in here? Like, <laughs> and like, and the other question was like, who, who would really answer them? Because some of them were outrageous. And I got to a point where I was like, well, all my friends had, you know, dates and girlfriends and stuff like that, or boyfriends. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this out. Like I can put an ad in and no one would know it was me. <laughs> so I got really curious and I decided to put a ad in the paper. 